And you know you get all the insight on Mutant TV. What's up, MVP? Welcome back. It's time for another edition of Strebo's Top 50 Horror Films of the New Millennium. Number 49, My Bloody Valentine 3D, D, D, D. Sorry, I always have to say 3D, D, D whenever I do that. Um, I have no idea why, but I'm sure it's annoying. Okay, uh, the town of Harmony would like to forget its horrific past. Mm. Ten years ago, after a tragic mining accident, Harry Warden awoke from his coma on Valentine's Day and brutally murdered 22 people with a pickaxe before being killed himself. Now, after years of peace, there's a killer on the loose, again wearing a miner's mask and brandishing a pickaxe. Has Harry Warden returned from the dead? Well, so there you go. That's what My Bloody Valentine 3D is all about. Um, this made my list because it was just a good, dirty, nasty slasher film that had great 3D special effects. I mean, it's not... The, the mystery behind the identity of Harry Warden, it's not necessarily, you know, your top-notch giallo. I mean, it's not going to have you throwing away your Agatha Christie novels anytime soon. Because uh, that part, you know, the guessing identity is really boring if you ask me. But what made this work was just the horrific elements in the 3D. I, I watched it when it was released in the theaters. You can find the review for it here on um, YouTube on the Mutantville Players account. And uh, I, it was just a good, it was, it reveled in the genre. It wasn't afraid of it. It didn't try to clean it up and sanitize it and make it PG-13. It's rated R. It was brutal. It was nasty. I mean, there's a sequence with, um, you know, the, the sequence with the naked prostitute. This is going to be spoiler, spoiler filled, by the way. I mean, um, sequence with the naked prostitute where she's running around at the beginning before she gets killed and uh that lasts a good 10 minutes and that's like full frontal nudity and the kills are all bloody and gory and chunky and when tom atkins gets killed and the pickaxe goes through his rips his jaw off and the jaw comes flying out into the cinema i mean that was kick ass okay <laughs> i mean it's watching 3d effects and moments like that where that make me believe that yeah, all 3D should is is awesome. You know, even though I didn't get to see the Final Destination in 3D, you know, uh, I can I can kind of imagine how some of the, the effects and kill sequences would have been good, but they were nowhere near as inventive as what was in My Blade Valentine 3D. Now, it doesn't rank higher because it's not really really scary. I mean, it's it's gory and entertaining and nasty. The killer has a great look, you know, that minor look, um, but at the end of the movie, you know, they take the guy out of his minor outfit, and he's just a normal guy walking around. I thought that was really weak. It kind of, you know, depowers their villain there at the last minute. So he's no longer the super powerful black glove killer that we see in all the giallo, that we see in all the slasher films. Now he's just, you know, Joe Blow that you can see on a TV movie or, or just a suspense thriller or something along those lines. He wasn't a horror monster anymore. But... So, yeah, remakes are going to make this list as well. And this isn't the first or the last one that's going to make this list. I'm sorry if you're, you know, like ethically opposed to remakes. But sometimes they do good things. Like, for example, for years, if you were a fan of My Bloody Valentine, this was all you could get was a bare bones edition of it. It's, it's the movie presented in full screen even. Uh, no, excuse me, uh, widescreen. Um... But it, it has all the gore cut, all the gore sequences are trimmed down by the MPAA. There's no special features, there's no commentary, there's nothing. For years and years and years, there was a secret plot or a secret rumor, whatever you want to call it, that um, the film My Bloody Valentine was going to be restored with all of the excised gore and kill sequences, with everything restored from it, because apparently the director, um, George Mahalka, no, it wasn't him. Who was it? It was the older guy. Well, maybe it was the producer that had it, because I don't see the guy's name here on the back. But Oh, John Dunning. Yeah, he's the producer. He was in possession of those original scenes, those excised sequences of gore. Um, and because of the release of My Blade Valentine 3D, voila, we got a special edition of My Blade Valentine. 
So, no longer the bare bones, crappy edition. Here you go, widescreen. All the excise gore was returned to it. Uh, there is no commentary track, unfortunately, but it does have a really, really good documentary called Bloodlust, My Bloody Valentine and the Rise of the Slasher Film. It even serves as kind of a sequel of sorts to um, uh, Going to Pieces. Okay, uh, that, was a, that was a really good book, really good documentary. So, good, good stuff. So, that is why My Bloody Valentine 3D, even though it was a remake, made my list at number 49. My Bloody Valentine 3D. In Mutantville, I'll be keeping my eye on you.